I hope everyone's doing well and having a good summer. I promised we would do another video about um, this week's topic, which is going to the beach, the ocean, swimming. Um, one of my favorite things about the beach, besides being able to kick back and relax, is um, all of the cool animals that live in the ocean. Um, sometimes we might see them while we're there. Sometimes we don't see them, but we know they're in there. Um, there's so many different types of animals that live in the ocean that we don't even sometimes even think about that I thought we would read uh, a book about um, the ocean, what lives in the ocean, and then we are going to watch a video about some uh, animals that we are familiar with that live in the ocean. So let's get right into it. The book that we are going to read is called Let's Visit the Ocean, okay? And it's by Jennifer Boothroyd, okay? That's the author. And let me make me a little smaller so we can actually see what we're reading. A journey to the ocean, back and forth, back and forth. Water washes up on a sandy beach, then it flows back into the ocean. An ocean is a large body of salt water. And for those of you that have ever been to the beach, have ever swam in the ocean and you've gotten some of the water in your mouth before, you know it is very, very salty. It is not water that you want to drink. It's, just, it's really disgusting if you get it in your mouth. The ocean, so again, it's a large body of salty water. It's not water that we would drink from the faucet, from the tap. The ocean covers most of the Earth's surface. So there's actually more water on planet Earth than there is land, okay? And just looking at this part of the globe, we see North America, where we live. We see South America, which um, is right below us, the continent below us. But if we look, we see mostly blue, which is the water, which is the ocean. So there's a lot more water on planet Earth than there are is places for people to live. The ocean biome is divided into the Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, Arctic, and Southern Oceans. Where we live in New York, we live closest to the Atlantic Ocean. If we were to go to the other side of our country, the USA, to maybe let's say California, we would be closer to the Pacific Ocean. But there's also the Arctic, which is way, way, way up, and it's probably very cold since it's close to the North Pole. There's the Southern Oceans, which are also cold, and the Indian Ocean. The largest, sorry, the ocean biome is the largest biome on Earth. So again, like we said, there is more water on Earth than land, so it would make sense that it's the biggest biome that we have. Now, parts of the ocean is very, very deep. Some of it isn't, where we can walk into it and stand, but some parts of the ocean are so deep that we can't even get to the bottom of it, even if we had special equipment. It's also so deep that sunlight can't even reach the bottom, okay? That means it's dark all the time because the sunlight can't reach that far down. And it shows right here in this, in this photograph a, an example of how dark the ocean can be because it's so deep. And it says, even without sunlight, plant and animal life can thrive in the ocean. So there are some types of fish, there are some types of animals, there are some types of plants that can survive without the sun. Much of the ocean hasn't been explored, okay? There's a, lot of, um, there's a lot of different places in the ocean that we have not yet been able to explore because people need special equipment to explore deep underwater. And sometimes it's not even safe for us to go that far down into the ocean, especially if we don't have that special equipment. So there's still a lot about our oceans that we don't know. Now, 
animals of the ocean. This is what I was really hoping we'd get into. The ocean is a habitat for many animals. All right, so lots of different animals live in, in the ocean. There are animals all over the ocean from the surface way down to the deepest bottoms. Okay, like we just read, there are some animals and fish and plants that can live way at the bottom of the ocean. But a lot of animals can't. They need the sunlight. They need more access to food. So we normally see them towards the surface or in the middle of the ocean, right in, right in between the bottom and the top. Nope, that wouldn't work. Now, there are thousands of different fish that live in the ocean. They come in many different shapes, colors, and sizes. And just looking at this picture here, you can see how many different types of fish, colors, shapes, and sizes there are. And that's just a small snapshot of what we might see. Can you guys think of an example of a type of fish that you might see in the ocean? And if you can, leave it in our comments section. Coral reefs, and this picture right here that I'm kind of circling, is a coral reef. They are made from tiny animals. These animals will grow hard skeletons outside of their bodies that stick together. The skeletons remain even after the animals have died. Now that sounds a little strange because for us, our skeletons are inside our body. Our skin covers our skeleton. But there are some animals that live in the ocean that have skeletons on the outside. And after they die, they kind of stick around and it creates this hard coral reef. And um, something really cool about coral reefs are lots of animals, fish, and plants, they will live around or even on the coral reefs. So it kind of becomes a home for lots of fish, which is why it's so important that we protect them because it is a place for um, these animals, fish, and plants. Just like trees, we want to protect our trees because we know it's homes to lots of different animals that live in forests. Coral reefs are the same in the ocean. They are homes for lots of fish, lots of animals, and plants. And we don't want them to not have a home anymore. An albatross is a bird that lives on the ocean. Okay, and this is a picture of an albatross. It eats fish and drinks salt water from the ocean. No wonder it lives at the beach. The ocean is full of salt water and has lots of fish. Perfect place for an albatross. Albatrosses glide on strong gusts of wind and float on the water when they need to rest. Um, if any of you guys have ever been to the beach or driven over a bridge that might go over a beach or just had a really good view of the ocean, um, you might see birds that are kind of just chilling on the water. That might be an albatross. The albatross can glide in the air for many hours, which is pretty cool. Krill, all right, these are krill. They are about 2.5 inches long, so they're really tiny, okay? Krill gather plants to eat with their front legs. Their back legs move them through the water. So instead of hands, they use their front legs to eat and their back legs to move. But the ocean is full of plant life. So they are able to eat plants that grow in, in the ocean, in the water, um, for their food. But an albatross, it's the type of bird you might see at the ocean. Krill are really, really t tiny little things that live in the ocean. Like I said at the beginning of the video, there's so many different types of animals that live in the ocean or live near the ocean for their food. Now this might be an animal that we're very familiar with because we talk about them in school. Whales, specifically the blue whale. Blue whales are found in every ocean on earth. And we talked about how there were five oceans um, specifically, the closest ones to us are the Atlantic or the Pacific. Um, 
but these whales can be found pretty much in any ocean. They will come to the surface of the water to breathe in air. Um, then um, you might see water shooting out. Uh, that's because they have a hole that they blow their air in and out of. And hopefully in our video, we will see a, video, uh, a clip of a whale. So they will come to the surface to breathe air. An adult blue whale can eat up to four tons of krill every day. So those little guys we just saw on the last page, blue whales like to eat those guys. And they can eat up to four tons of krill every day. That's a lot of krill. But again, blue whales are very, very big. All right. Later on in the video, I'll try to see if I can um, compare it to something that we might see in our everyday environment. Um, new bl newborn blue whales, okay, so baby blue whales weigh more than most, way more than most cars. So think about how much a car might weigh and how big a car is. A baby whale is that size and weighs as much as a car. So you can imagine how big an adult whale would be. Oh, these guys, they might be cute and fun to look at. But if you see them in the water, I would try to stay away. These are jellyfish. Jellyfish float through the water. If you're ever at the beach, you might see them um, where you're swimming. Okay? They just float on through. Jellyfish have something called tentacles that hang from their bodies. These tentacles can sting other animals that become their prey. So jellyfish don't have sharp teeth the way a shark might. They're not big like a whale. So they have something called a tentacle. And it kind of helps protect them, but it also kind of helps them get food. Because what they will do is they will use their tentacle to sting another type of fish or animal that's in the water. And that way they can eat it. Um, it kind of stuns them or kills them. Um, jellyfish, if you see them, I would say try to stay away from them because being stung by a jellyfish does hurt. This guy, sea turtles. Sea turtles live most of their lives in the ocean. Their large flippers, right here, will help them swim. And if you've ever seen Finding Nemo, you will see a uh, clip with the sea turtles. And they do swim through the water. They will come to the surface to breathe air. Now, female turtles, they will come to land, so you might see them in the sand when they go to lay their eggs. But again, they do spend most of their time in the water. But they will lay their baby eggs on the beach. So if you see them, leave them alone. <laughs> um, now we're going to talk about some plants in the ocean, because just like there's lots of animals, there's lots of different types of plants that grow in the ocean. Ocean plants are similar to plants on land. They need sunlight to survive, and they will release oxygen. They provide food and shelter for ocean animals. So just like plants are important for us to grow, to help provide food for us, to provide oxygen, it's the same for uh, plants that grow in the ocean. They provide food, shelter, and oxygen for animals that live in the water. Uh, phytoplankton, I think I said that correct, phytoplankton are tiny ocean plants, okay? They're so tiny it might be hard for us to see. These plants are food for many ocean animals, and this is a picture of a phytoplankton. Phytoplankton float in the upper layer of the ocean to collect sunlight because we know most plants need sunlight to grow and thrive. So they go right to the top of the water where they can get lots of sunlight. Because we know parts of the ocean don't always get sunlight. Now many animals will use seagrass. Now did you guys know that there is grass that grows in the ocean? It's interesting. Many animals will use seagrass as food or habitat. Okay, and here's a picture. Seagrass grows its roots in the ocean floor, all right? And if we look at it, it looks just like 
grass that grows on our lawns, except for it's at the bottom of the ocean. And animals will eat it, they'll use it for shelter, um, they might just end up swimming through it, they'll use it sometimes for protection from other animals if they can get hide in there. Now, seagrass is different from another plant that we know that grows in the water, which is seaweed. The two plants grow and get nutrients in different ways. So seagrass is not the same as seaweed. Kelp. I don't know if any of you guys have ever heard of this, but kelp um, is something that grows in the ocean. Kelp forests grow in cold ocean waters. Kelp can grow very tall. Many animals depend on kelp for shelter and food. Kelp gets nutrients from its leaves instead of the roots, which is different than a, a lot of plants. Most plants get their nutrients up through their roots, but kelp gets it from the leaves. Root-like objects called holdfasts keep kelp on the ocean floor. Gas pockets help it float toward the light. Kelp is actually a type of algae, and it's not a plant. So it's a little different than what a plant is, but it looks like a plant. But kelp is something that we might see in the oceans. Um, typically, like it says, it grows in the colder water, um, and it's different from most of the plants that grow in the water. Now, working together, the ocean is a giant ecosystem. All the living and non-living parts work together. The ocean also has many smaller ecosystems. One important ecosystem is the rocky shore. All right, and both of these pictures kind of show the rocky shore. Kelp and phytoplankton grow on the rocks. They are food to many animals. So it's important that we take care of the ocean and all of the ecosystems within the ocean because if we destroy part of them, a lot of the animals that depend on those ecosystems, whether it's the animals, the, the plants, um, they won't have food, they won't have shelter, and they will die out. So it's a chain reaction. So if for some reason we were to destroy all the kelp and phytoplankton that grows on these rocks, some of the animals that eat them wouldn't have food anymore. And if they don't have food, they're going to die. And then if they die, the animals that depend on them for food, they won't have food. And if they don't have food, they will die. And it kind of just is a ripple effect. Now, sea urchin, they also live in these rocks. They eat the kelp. So if you see these little green things here, they look kind of, I don't want to say squishy. They kind of look like a, one of our stress balls with the prickly stuff on them. They are sea urchin. They will eat the kelp. Sea stars also live among the rocks, and they will eat the sea urchin who eat the kelp that live on the rocks. So we're talking about our chain here. The kelp grows near the rocks. The sea urchin eats the kelp. The starfish that live there will eat the sea urchins that eat the kelp. Okay? It's all a chain. We all depend on each other in the ecosystems. Sea stars used to be called starfish, but they are not actually a fish. They are Echinoderms, Echin, echinoderms, never, uh, I don't know that term, so I don't know if I even said it right, but they're not technically a fish, so they are now called sea stars, okay? And they are called a sea star because they are kind of shaped exactly like a star. Now, the sea stars, they help the ecosystem. If there were too many urchins, they would eat all of the kelp. Now, other animals, if, they, if all the kelp was eaten by the sea urchin, the other animals wouldn't have any food, okay? So sometimes, if there's too many of one thing, another animal or creature will come in and help take care of it. 
The ocean is an amazing biome. There's so much to explore, okay? What we read about, there are so many more different types of animals um, and different types of uh, plants that live there that we didn't even cover. And I'm sure you guys, excuse me, could think of lots of other animals that we might see in the ocean. Um, that was just a small snippet of what we would see. Um, we're just going to read this final page here about people in the ocean. People use the ocean in a variety of ways. People visit the ocean to swim or surf the waves. They travel across the ocean in large boats. Many people will catch fish or other ocean animals. People need to use the ocean responsibly. People should keep trash and chemicals out of the ocean. Water pollution hurts the plants and animals. People also shouldn't catch too many of the same kinds of fish. This might cause an animal to become extinct. Um, and if we were talking about an animal that's, an ex ex uh, that's extinct, it means that there no, there's no longer any more of that type of animal. Um, we do have animals, and we've talked about this in school, animals that are endangered, meaning there's not a lot of, a lot of, a lot of that type of animal and they're usually protected. It means you can't hunt them. You can't try to um, capture them because we don't want our animals to go to become extinct. Um, so again, if you guys go to the ocean, it's fine to go and play and go swim, but we have to be safe. We have to keep our oceans clean. We have to keep our beaches clean. And one way that I know you can do it and that I can do it is if we bring stuff there it's, that's garbage, make sure to throw it away or recycle it. Um, don't dump stuff into the water that shouldn't be there. Um, it's something that we really all have to work on together to keep our animals safe in the water, the plants safe, and the ocean clean for everyone. Um, the next part of the video, I am going to play a little YouTube video about ocean animals. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Did you know that almost three quarters of the earth is covered by oceans? They're all connected to each other. The biggest ocean is called the Pacific Ocean. Pacific means peaceful. But this ocean can have giant waves. Doesn't look so peaceful to me. There are many amazing animals that live in the Pacific Ocean. Some are huge. Some are tiny. Some are fish. Some are mammals. Some are crustaceans. Some are squishy invertebrates. There are even birds that spend their whole lives on the Pacific Ocean. Let's go see. Gosh, these are loud critters. These are California sea lions. Sea lions are big, bulky mammals. The male sea lions are bigger than the females, reaching almost two meters long and weighing about 300 kilograms. That's about the size of four people. Sea lions like to sun themselves on coastal rocks. You can sometimes see hundreds of sea lions all sunning themselves together. They also have their babies on land. But sea lions spend most of their time in the water, swimming, and playing. They hold their breath and can dive underwater to catch food. They like to eat fish, squid, octopuses, and all kinds of shellfish like clams and mussels. You might confuse seals with sea lions but sea lions have visible ear flaps and can sort of walk on land using their large flippers. Seals have much smaller flippers and they don't walk. They wriggle on their bellies. Also, no cute little ear flaps. The sea otter is another ocean mammal. It lives in the Northern Pacific in the shallow waters right along the coast. Sea otters are known for staying well-groomed, taking care of their thick coat of waterproof fur helps keep the sea otter warm. Did you notice their webbed hind feet? These help the sea otter swim. They're really good at diving to catch food. They can stay underwater for a few minutes. They hold their breath and look around. The sea otters can even close their nose and ears so water doesn't get in. What do they catch? Sea otters like to eat all kinds of seafood, including clams, mussels, crabs, squid, and fish. They bring their catch back up to the surface. Then the sea otter floats on its back and eats the food off its tummy. Mm -hmm. It uses a rock to break open its meal. Sea otters have favorite rocks they carry around with them. Did you know sea otters have pockets? Really, they're flaps of loose skin under each arm that they use like little pouches. 
They also use them when diving to carry as much food as possible back to the surface. Sea otters spend most of their time in the ocean. They even have their babies there. Aw, cute. They are very social and form groups of up to a hundred. They float together in these groups called rafts. They even sleep while floating, often holding on to seaweed. They also like to hold on to each other so they don't float away from the group. The blue whale is the largest animal that has ever lived. It's even bigger than the biggest dinosaurs. They get up to 30 meters long, almost 100 feet, and can weigh almost 200 tons. Would you believe blue whales get this big eating teeny tiny food? They live on krill, which is a very, very small animal that kind of looks like a shrimp. A blue whale has to eat millions of krill each day. The whales swim through the water with their mouths open, letting the swarms of krill float inside. Then the whale closes its mouth and lets the water flow out through a kind of screen called baleen plates. The water goes out, but the krill are trapped inside. Yum, yum, yum. Blue whales have enormous babies, which is not surprising. They are about seven meters long and weigh more than two tons when they are born. Whales are mammals, which means they nurse their young. Baby blue whales drink more than 400 liters of milk from their mothers each day. Hey, do you hear something? Oh, it's just a blue whale song. That's right, blue whales sing to each other. I wonder what they're saying. Did you know that coral is an animal? It looks like a very pretty rock, but nope, it's an animal. One way you can tell is because it eats other animals for food. Each individual animal is called a polyp. Coral are related to jellyfish, which you can see at the early stage of its life when it can swim freely around looking for a home. The polyp attaches to a rock or some old coral. Then it grows a harder outer skeleton. Over time, if many polyps grow together, they form what we call a coral reef. Coral reefs are home to many, many kinds of sea life, including all sorts of beautiful fish, starfish, sea slugs, sea turtles, eels, seahorses, that's a kind of fish. Coral reefs are habitats for many animals, and so it's really important they are protected. You may be wondering, how does an animal that is stuck in one place eat? Coral eat by catching tiny floating animals called zooplankton. They stretch out long, stinging tentacles and catch their prey as it floats by. Then they pull their tiny prey into their mouths. Many coral also have a close relationship with algae. The algae can do photosynthesis, using sunlight as well as carbon dioxide from the coral to make sugar for food. The algae share the food they make with the coral. The coral, in turn, give the algae a safe home. We call this kind of mutually beneficial relationship symbiosis. Here's another kind of symbiotic relationship, the orange clownfish and the magnificent sea anemones. They are two very different kinds of animals, but they live together in harmony. The clownfish makes its home in and around the anemone. These cute stripedy fish like to eat algae, as well as various small animals like worms. They swim in and out of the anemone tentacles. The anemone, on the other hand, stays rooted in one place and waits for its food to come close enough to catch. Anemones will eat fish, shrimp, mussels, sea urchins. They use their stinging tentacles to stun their prey before eating it. But they don't sting the clownfish. The anemone might be using the clownfish as bait to attract some bigger fish for its dinner. The other fish come nosing around and bam, stung by the anemone. Here's a familiar sight to whale watchers, the gray whale. This kind of whale looks like it's covered with rocks. Those are actually little animals called barnacles. When the barnacles fall off, they leave scars behind on the whale. Aw, poor little whale. I mean, poor giant enormous whale. The gray whales grow up to about 15 meters and weigh about 40 tons. This is another baleen whale. It eats by snuffling up small creatures from the bottom of the ocean and then filtering them using the baleen plates in its mouth. Gray whales travel long distances every year, up to 11,000 kilometers. They travel along familiar routes, 
which makes it easier for whale watchers to spot these gray whales than some other more unpredictable whales. They are often seen on the west coast of North America, singing songs to each other and herding their little babies. Well, when I say little, I mean compared to the parents. Baby gray whales are about five meters long and weigh a ton. I mean, literally a ton, about 2,000 pounds. Orcas are sometimes called killer whales. They're actually dolphins, the world's largest dolphin. These mammals are huge, about eight meters long and weighing about 11 tons. They get their nickname because they are very successful hunters. Orcas will eat almost anything, seals, sharks, whales, they can find their prey using echolocation. They make clicks and other sounds and listen for the echo that bounces back. That tells them which direction to swim. Sort of like a bat, but a giant killer bat that lives in the ocean. You can recognize orcas by their distinctive black and white coloring. It might help them stay camouflaged in the water. It's hard to see just where they begin and end. There's also a tricky part of their coloring. That giant white spot is not their eye. That's their eye. Orcas work together in family pods of up to 40 animals to chase down their prey. They're also known to use very clever hunting techniques. For instance, if they see a seal or other prey animal on a piece of ice, they swim quickly towards it making a wave. The wave knocks the seal off the ice into the water and bam, the orca gets its dinner. Orcas also sing songs to each other, probably congratulating themselves on being excellent hunters. This is a seabird called the wandering albatross. It doesn't actually live in the ocean, but it spends almost its whole life flying over the ocean. It has the longest wings of any bird, about three meters across. This lets the albatross glide in the air for hours at a time. It hardly has to flap its wings at all. It does land on the water to eat, picking up fish, squid, and octopuses. When the wandering albatross finds a mate, they make a nest on land and take turns keeping their egg warm. Once it hatches and is big enough to leave the nest, they all return to the water. Is that another huge bird flying underwater? No, that's a manta ray, which is a very unusual looking fish. It's one of the biggest kinds of fish in the Pacific Ocean, with a wingspan that can get over seven meters across. The biggest manta ever caught was over a thousand kilograms. And by now, you might not be surprised that it got that big by eating teeny tiny plankton. Have we talked about plankton yet? Plankton is not just one kind of animal. It's a catch-all name for any tiny organism that lives floating around in the ocean, usually drifting around the top. This includes small crustaceans and the eggs and larvae of bigger animals. Animals that eat plankton, like the manta ray, are filter feeders. They suck in huge quantities of water and then use baleen or other kinds of toothy combs in their mouth to hold onto their food and let the water run out. Manta rays like to swim together when they're feeding. They really do look like a flock of birds. Is it my imagination or is he smiling at us? Or maybe he's hungry. Ugh, good thing we're too big to be plankton. The giant clam is the largest mollusk on Earth. It gets over a meter across and can weigh over 200 kilograms, more than 400 pounds. This doesn't happen overnight. These clams can get over 100 years old. They don't always look like this though. For the first 12 hours of their lives, they're just fertilized eggs floating next to their parents. Then they hatch in our soft larvae drifting in the water. Within a few days, they start growing a shell around themselves. They soon settle down and attach to one spot where they will live the rest of their lives. The clams have a symbiotic relationship with algae. The algae do photosynthesis and give sugars and proteins to the clam to eat. The giant clam also eats some passing plankton as a filter feeder. I know what you're thinking. Is it safe to swim next to a giant clam? Can it trap prey by snapping its giant shell shut? No, it moves very slowly. Since giant clams are cemented in one place, usually on a coral reef, you might wonder how do they reproduce? 
Neighboring clams send out swarms of eggs and sperm that have to run into each other. That's how. Huh. These were just a few of the amazing animals living in the Pacific Ocean. Have you seen any of these animals in person? Tell us about it in the comments. We'd love to hear your stories. Now it's time to watch another great video about animals from Socratica Kids. You get to pick. Well, that's the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed learning a little bit more about ocean life. Um, please feel free to share in the Google Classroom what your favorite ocean animal is. Um, I would have to say I really like sea stars because I think they're pretty. Um, I like seahorses. I think they're cute. And of course, I'm a fan of dolphins because they're so friendly and playful. But um, please, please, please tell me what your favorite ocean animal is. Feel free to tell me if you've ever been to the ocean, what you like to do at the beach. Um, I'd love to hear any of your experiences. Again, I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Um, I wish we could all go to the ocean together, but it's not safe really right now. Um, so take care, stay healthy, stay well, and I hope to see you all soon. Bye!